Hey everyone, Daikin here. Today I'm going to be doing another character overview video and determining are they worth you pulling and investing into. But before we begin, I want to take some time talking about my opinions on the whole matter of the Bridal Character Edition. If you're just here for the character overview, then I'll put a timestamp in the pinned comment so you can skip to that section of the video. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the Bridal Character concept and what it all stemmed from. The Bridal Character was introduced as a fan art competition to draw your favorite female Astro Chronicle characters and bridal outfits. So essentially any female character was fair game for the competition. However, here we can see these non-characters were the ones that made the cut. Here we have Calypso, Athena, Yuki, Pandora, Utanashi, Yoru, Kamiko, Nethria, and Nyx. So the fans who aren't the best at art at least got a chance to vote for one of these non-waifus. Now, right off the bat, there are a few jarring things about the whole competition. First off, it seems to have been one big marketing campaign as these artists all have links to download the game within the description along with certain hashtags, hashtag Extra Chronicles and hashtag Extra Chronicles fan art. It seems that these must have been some guideline rules in order to get your character in the running. A very clever and free marketing campaign, that is if some artists weren't paid to do the job, as there have been artists who have been paid to do multiple artworks for Astro Chronicles already. Now I haven't really spoke to any of these artists personally, so I can't really tell you if that's the truth or not. The second thing you may have noticed is the tweet specifically uses the word skin, as most people that were respecting the character had in mind. Some of these are the case, which leads to my next point. There are indeed Bridal Nethria and Bridal Pandora skins already in the game. The fan art here are very beautiful, don't get me wrong, but they look very similar to the ones already in the game. So why were they allowing them for the running? The Athena picture is almost directly taken from the concept that the artist has drew. So we would have gotten a second version of the same character, just with it being the skin as the character for those two. It's a very questionable marketing strategy that has me very confused on what parts of the competition was genuine or not. But even besides that point, if people knew that this was going to be in a character or a skin, I think more people would have been inclined to change their answer. If this bridal character was going to have a banner, then it would have made more sense for Yuki, Nyx, or Utanashi to receive it as they all don't have SSR versions at the moment. And I can't imagine that they would make a banner just for an SR character as you can do a 10 pool to get an SR. Calypso or Yoru could have also benefited from this for a chance of better talents and passives. However for Calypso, I believe it was already too late and I don't know how popular Yoru is within the community. So who's to say it would have even happened. But for now, let's start talking about the character who won the competition herself, Bridal Athena. Bridal Athena in a side by side comparison is a very lazy design character. If we look at other examples of characters, we can see that other playstyles are vastly different. Different class, different active skills, talents, and passives. However, for Bridal Athena, she has the same overall design, animations, and active skills. Her only differences lies within her talent and passives. Overall, I think the whole process wasn't really well put together, but some people love Bridal Athena, so I guess that's enough for them. Anyway, that's my take on the whole situation about the bridal characters. What do you all think about it? Also, do any of you know the artists and have they or are willing to make statements on their involvement with the competition? I would love to hear their side of the story. Now, let's get on with the overview of Bridal Athena itself. Bridal Athena is a fire mage whose talent allows her to increase her fire damage by 15% and will max out at 30%. Additionally, she does 10% more damage to enemies inflicted with burn, root, and weaken. Her basic attack, Ignite, deals small AoE fire damage. Her ultimate, Flames of Fate, is a small AoE that deals a large amount of fire damage with a chance to inflict burn. Bridal Athena's first active skill is Solstice, that is a medium sized AoE spell that does large fire damage over 3 seconds. Enrage greatly increases her crit damage, and her last active skill, Inferno, deals continuous fire damage while reducing fire resistance for 5 seconds, which can't be dodged. For passives, Bridal Athena Red Phase are increased by 100% of their normal power in combat, along with a 10% reduction in her base cooldowns. Volatility gives her a fluctuation in damage between 80 to 140%. Her final passive, Monster Hunter, allows her to do 5% additional damage to regular monsters and 12% additional damage to bosses and elite monsters. So, how does Bridal Athena compare to her base self? 
To be honest, her base kit is the same, so essentially you get Athena. However, the slight changes in her passives I felt wasn't for the best. I personally feel having 30% damage increase over 354 intelligent points isn't worth it. And while Bright Athena has more higher damage percent, regular Athena can rival those percentages through her stationary attacks along with an 8% increase of her element damage. Overall, Bright Athena is slightly worse, but if you don't have Athena, then she's probably good to have. Bright Athena could work pretty well with herself as well if you're running a Candle of Fire Shred team. But on the downside of that being probably her best type of team, the other half of her talent being that the way it is, on a Fire Shred team wouldn't get much benefit outside of the burn chances from her and the other fire units. At the moment, I don't know if Candela and Double Athena or Candela Athena Nora is better. So even then, she may not even be best in slot for that said team that she works on. So, if you liked her design, you probably already pulled. If you were hesitant and don't have an Athena, she could be a good addition to your team. And if you wanted to run a Fire Shred team and have Candela, she could also be a good addition as well. Anyway, that's all I have for you in this video. What do you think about the whole competition thing and Athena's kit? Let me know in the comments below. Also, if you liked the thing I had to say, drop me a like, I greatly appreciate it. And if you want to hear more from me, follow me on my socials. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you know when the next video goes live. As always, my name is Daikin, and I'll see you next time. Signing out.